Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to this segment of the Hopkinton Hangout Hour. For the next half hour, we are going to take you through a recap of our summer baseball coverage this year and to let you know all that has happened since we started covering games in mid-July. This summer, we have covered two local summer ball teams, the Ashland Sevens and Hopkinton Hillers Senior Ruth Baseball. First, we will tell you about the Ashland Sevens. The Ashland Sevens is what normally would be Ashland Allegiant Baseball Post 77, but this year they are playing in an independent league since the season was canceled. They are currently playing in the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League which is primarily Zone 6 Legion teams, but Ashland, along with Natick, hopped on to the league since they were the only teams out of uh, Zone 5 that were able to put a team together to compete this year. Speaking of Natick, our recap starts off in Natick as the Sevens of Ashland headed to Mahan Field to take on Natick. Here's a look at what happened. On July 15th, the 4 and o Ashland Sevens chose to host Natick at Mahan Field in Natick as one of their home games. They trailed one to nothing into the bottom of the first, but the Sevens bats got going. Coleman deals. And this is up the left side. Fielded by the shortstop. He'll throw to third. It gets away from him. And everybody's going to be safe. And now the lead runner, Balowitz, going to try to score. And he will. We are knotted up at one apiece. Mason Dushney is out of Ashland. Graduated this year, an 18 year old. And of course, you get a lot of the players that would normally play AAU ball and the various prep leagues that were canceled playing in these independent leagues as well. Lined up and the pitch, Kavanaugh taking off as this is driven in the air over to center field and it is caught. And the runner from third is going to tag and he will score. And just like that, the Ashland Sevens have a two to one lead as Hornung comes around. A sacrifice RBI fly out for Dushney as he gets the job done. Count is full on tank. Coleman looks at second and deals. And this is gulped in the air, and that'll slip into a hole up the left side. Here comes another Ashland Sevens run. And it is a three to one lead as Lawrence Tang has his first hit of the season, and it's an RBI. Tom Cavanaugh comes around to score. It was an eight to one Ashland Sevens lead heading into the bottom of the fifth. And the bats got going once again for the Sevens. The Sevens trying to put the finishing touches on what could perhaps be win number five. And this is up the middle past the reach of the shortstop. Curly heading to third, around 30 goes. The throw in is going to be nearly cut off. Curly will score. And now heading over to third is Calabrese. And out of second is Sam Farrell. Taking advantage of the situation there. It's a nine to one Ashland Sevens lead. Ashland took the win via a five inning mercy by a final of 11 to one and improved to five wins and no losses. In the game, Nick Calabrese went a perfect three for three at the plate and scored a pair of runs as well as drove in a run. The next night, July 16th, Ashland hosted Canton at Ashland Middle School. Ashland had a 3-2 lead heading into the bottom of the second, and the Sevens rallied. 24 on base percentage as he rips this one in the air to center field, and that'll drop down. Here comes Nick Calabrese to score. Behind him is Dossus. He will score with ease. And now Farrell's going to come around. He'll score as well. It's going to be a three RBI triple for Jackson Hordung. 
And the Ashland Sevens are up 6-2 to two on Canton. Line up and the pitch. Up the left side, and it's past the reach of the third baseman. Here comes Hornung around to score, and that'll be the fourth sevens run of the inning as Kavanaugh slides safely into second base. An RBI double for Dom Kavanaugh. Line up and the pitch. Dennison gets a piece of this one over to center field, and that'll drop in for a hit. Dom Kavanaugh is around to score, and the throw to third will not be in time to get Balowitz. And it's an RBI single for Dennison. He then tried to take second on the throw to third and was thrown out. But he gets the run in and makes it a five-run inning for the Ashland Sevens. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air over to center field, and that's past the reach of the center fielder. Balowitz scores with ease. Up to second base goes Donovan, and he'll round second, heading to third, and he has the RBI triple. The Sevens pouring it on, a six-run inning, and they lead it nine to two. Six runs in the second inning, and Ashland took the win and a sunlight shortened game 14 to seven and improved to six and oh on the season. Jackson Hornung went three for four at the plate and drove in six runs and scored three. On July 19th, six and oh Ashland hosted Milton in Holliston. The game was tied at one heading to extras Milton put up four runs in the top of the eighth and led it five to one, heading to the bottom of the inning, but Ashland was not ready to give in. Here's a look at the eventful bottom of the eighth. Ashland sevens, the last remaining undefeated team as this is hit up the right side. Glove by the first baseman, throw over, is gonna get away. One run is already in, here comes another run. And we are not quite done yet. A five to three game as Kavanaugh advances to third. Andrew Posse would get the win. And we have an animal on the field. Looks like there's a groundhog on the field. So it is Groundhog's Day here at Robert H. Adams Field. Coach Obed going to try to chase him away. We'll certainly try to get a good shot of him for the broadcast as well. Well, it's turned into a pretty entertaining night to say the least in many ways. And that groundhog does not want to leave. I think he wants to play some baseball. And some of the players trying to maybe get rid of him. But he wants to stay out there. He's getting a real good view of this game. And it looks like they finally have got rid of the groundhog. Well, that was something. Leg left hand, the pitch. Gets a piece of it over to left center. That'll drop in. One run is in to score. Here comes the tying run. And guess what? We're not in that five apiece. Unbelievable. Ashland tied things up, but Milton would end up plating four more runs in the top of the ninth and would take the game nine to five and hand the sevens their first loss of the season. Ashland fell to six and one on the year. After a tough loss, Ashland went into Westwood on July 20th and got back in the win column. Ashland led two to one heading into the top of the fourth where they added some more runs. Batting average on the season, 20 at bats, 690 on 
696 on base percentage and gets a piece of this one and that'll drop into left center. One run is being waved around. He will score. It's an RBI single for Nick Calabrese. Info set to deal. Swing and a miss and he is going to try to run it out and it's going to be an out. Run didn't come around to score as Isaac Curley crossed home plate. And it's a 4-1 game. That's what it was. The catcher drops it, the runner could tag. As this is going to be hit up the left side, in the left field it goes, one run is in. And it is going to be an RBI single for Kevin Balowitz. Runner is taking off from first base. He's now caught in a pickle. And I think there's a trick to maybe try to get the runner from third to go, and he's gonna go, and he's gonna score! So it works out! The old trick lead worked out for Kevin Balowitz. O'Shea Donovan comes around to score. And it's a six to one game. Balowitz is even able to get back to first base safely. Four runs scored for the sevens in the inning. And they would end up taking the game 13 to five and improve to seven and one overall. Mason Dushney, Isaac Curley, and Nick Calabrese all had a pair of hits in the game. Dushney drove in two runs while Curley and Calabrese scored three runs apiece. On July 22nd, 7 and 1, Ashland went into Walpole. Ashland was trailing 3 to 2 heading into the fifth, but were able to tally up some runs. Connor Donovan had the call. It's going to be hit in the air, right field line, and it's going to be called fair. Calabrese is going to try to score from second. And it looks like, wow, Cap Balowitz is going to be safe at second. He ran that one out. And a run is going to score for Ashland. That's going to tie it at three. Vital at bat for Dushney. He's going to rope this up the second base line. That's going to score Balowitz. Comes all the way around in a RBI single for Mason Dushney times at this point. That's going to be crushed up the uh, second base line yet again. It's going to split the gap and trying to go home. And he's safe. Wow. Mason Dushney. Ashland took the game 7-4 to four and improved to 8-1 and one on the season. In the game, Nick Calabrese continued to be red hot at the plate, going 2-3 for three with an RBI and a run. On July 27th, 8 and 1 Ashland hosted Hyde Park in a Sunday evening matchup. Bottom of the first, pitcher Tyler Dossis helped his own cause. this up the first baseline that's a fair ball here comes Dushney around to score and now Farrell being waved around he will score as well a two RBI single for Tony Dossis it's two nothing Ashland sevens Ashland leading three to nothing into the bottom of the sixth and they added some security He'll get a piece of this one over to left field. This could be trouble, and it's going to get by the left fielder. Kavanaugh will score with ease. Dossus is going to be waved around. He will score as well. Now heading to third is Donovan. Did he get in? No, he's going to be called out. But he gets the job done. As Dom Kavanaugh comes around to score. Tony Dossus comes around to score. So he can score that a two RBI double for Shea Donovan and throw out trying to advance to third. And this is going to be up the middle. That'll get through. Here comes Curley, an RBI single for Nick Calabrese. He just continues to make noise with 
the bat. He has been unbelievable in that ninth spot this season. That will bring up Mason Dushney. Ashland took the game 6 to nothing. Tyler Dossis pitched a complete game shutout, striking out six hitters overall, and helped Ashland improve to 9-1 and one on the season. Another team we had the privilege of covering this summer was Hopkinton Senior Ruth Baseball. Coach Steve Simos, assisted by some of the Hopkinton baseball staff, brought back the program for the first time since 2015 to give the high school team an opportunity to play together since the high school season was canceled. And they have certainly made it a fun experience. We had our first broadcast on Monday, July 27th, and they went to Bowditch Field in Framingham with a record of five wins, three losses, and a tie to take on four and four Framingham. Top of the first inning, the Hillers' bats got going right off the bat. It was a nice night here at Bowditch Field. As Kelly steps in, temperatures in the low 80s now. It was certainly a hot and humid day, but it is starting to cool off. Lefty, Connor Kelly, faces a 0 and 1 count. Slight lead by the runners, and that'll hit him, and a run will score. So just like that, it's one to nothing. Hopkinton as Ambersoni comes around to score. Field, right up and the pitch. And he'll get a piece of this one over to left center, and that'll drop down for a hit. One run is in to score. Here comes Barker Hook. He will score. And now a third run. Kelly trying to score, and he will as well. It's a 4 to nothing lead for the... Dylan Locke comes through with a 3-RBI double for the Hillers and puts them up 4 to nothing. Keen takes a look at second base and deals. And he'll get down for it. Here he comes. After that, Chase Doherty adds another run. A nice RBI single scores Dylan Locke to make it five to nothing. Five runs scored in the first inning. And Hopkinton leading seven to nothing into the top of the fifth started to rally until this happened. Game Locke has doubled and walked. There's a three RBI double back in the first inning. He also scored a run, fifth run of the game. And he'll hit this one up the left side. That'll get through into left field as the sprinklers come on here at Bowditch Field. It'll be a single by Locke. Breslin up to second and the sprinklers are on here at Bowditch Field, and some of the outfielders having to dodge the water, and right in the midst of that base hit by Locke. The sprinklers came on, and unfortunately, due to the wetness of the field and inability to turn the irrigation system off, they had to call the game right there. Hopkinton took the win 7 to nothing and improved to 6 wins, 3 losses, and 1 tie on the season. Hopkinton getting the sprinkler shortened 7 to nothing victory over Framingham. The bats were tremendous. Tommy Ambersoni, 1 for 3 at the plate, 2 runs in the game. And then, of course, you had Drew Rankatori. He went two for three with an RBI. Alex Parker Hook went for three with a run scored and an RBI. Jack Breslin chipped in with a couple of hits. How about Dylan Locke? Two for two at the plate, a run and three RBIs in the game. And then Chase Doherty, he went one for two with an RBI. Chase Doherty, I expect him to have a big role on the high school club in upcoming years. And then pitching-wise, John Waters was terrific. Four solid innings of work. 
giving up no runs and just one hit. Five strikeouts in the game. Tremendous work by John Waters. In the next game for Hopkinton Senior Ruth, they went home to host Franklin, and the bats picked up right where they left off, scoreless in the bottom of the first. But that quickly changed. Victory in Framingham yesterday in a sprinkler shortened game as this is up the left side. That's a fair ball. Here comes Rankatori over to third. Are they going to wave him around? Yes, they are. He's going to try to score, and he will. One to nothing, Hillers, an RBI double for Alex Parker Hook. Kelly will get a piece of this one. Up the middle it goes into center field. Parker Hook being waved around. Here he comes, and he will score. Two nothing, Hillers, an RBI single for Connor Kelly. And Kelly's going to get a piece of this over to first base. There it goes. And that'll drop into right field. And here comes Breslin to score. And he will score. So it looks like they flip flop Jack Breslin and Connor Kelly in the batting order. But either way, they both get the job done. Next inning, bottom of the second, Hopkinton added three more runs. up and the pitch. That hit him and a run will score. Amy Propura comes around to make it four to nothing. Sheamus up to third, ranking Torrey to second, Parker up to first, Jack Breslin to the plate. Dula from the stretch. And this is ripped up into center field. One run is around to score. Here comes Rankatori. He will score as well. Throw to third. And they will not get Parker Hook. He is ruled safe. Two more runs are plated for the Hillers. A two RBI double for Jack Breslin. And why not three more runs in the bottom of the third? Set to deal. And Ambersoni will put this up the right side. That's a fair ball. Here comes Dylan Locke to score. And right behind him is Perpura, and he will score as well. A two RBI single for Tommy Ambersoni. It is now an eight to nothing lead for the Hillers. And the stretch. And this is ripped into right field. That'll drop in for a hit. Being waved around and scoring is Amber Sony. Shane is held up at third. An RBI single for Drew Rancatori. Hopkinton would end up plating another run in the bottom of the fifth to take the 10-0 win via mercy rule and improved to eight wins, three losses, and a tie on the season. Let's take a look at the box score from the Hopkinton 10-0 Mercy win over Franklin at home on Tuesday night. I call it an 11-0 win because technically that second run scored, but the Mercy rules 10, so I guess they erased the run. But let's take a look at the box score. Impressive stuff as always. Tommy Ambrosoni went two for four, run scored two RBIs. How about Ronnie Sheamus? Three for three at the plate with a run scored. Then you had Drew Rankatori, two for four at the plate. Two runs scored and an RBI. Alex Parker Hook chipped in with a hit, scored a run, and drove in two. Then you had Jack Breslin, three for three at the plate. A run scored, four RBIs for Breslin. Connor Kelly, one for three with an RBI. And then Dylan Locke chipping in once again. He went one for one with a run scored for Hopkinton. And then Vinny Purpura, the pitcher, helping his own cause. Two for two with two runs scored. Impressive stuff. And talking about Vinny Purpura, 
He went three solid innings in the game, striking out seven. And then Mike Bernie, he picked up the rest of the way. He pitched two solid shutout innings as well, striking out one as Hopkinton takes down an impressive baseball town in Franklin. Way of the mercy, 10 to nothing was the final in that game. And guess what else Hopkinton did? In their last game of the season in Westboro, they ended up getting a 15 to nothing mercy win over Westboro. So the Hopkinton senior Ruth team finishing off regular season play with three straight wins, nine wins, three losses, and a tie overall. They wrap up the regular season, and now they head to playoffs. And we are certainly going to try to cover as many playoff games as we can for the Hopkinton Senior Ruth team. Taking a look at some of the season stats for Hopkinton Senior Ruth, it's certainly been impressive. Let's take a look at the top hitters. Drew Rankatori, a 571 batting average, nine RBIs, nine runs scored, 553 on base percentage. Unbelievable. Dylan Locke, 556 batting average. He only played in four games, but he contributed heavily in those four games he played. 667 on base percentage, three RBIs, four runs. Tommy McAuliffe, 500 batting average. He got into five games, 700 on base percentage, an RBI, and two runs. Of course, uh, one of the things they try to do in Senior Ruth, they try to give everybody some playing time. Jack Breslin, he had a whole lot of playing time for the Senior Ruth team. He played in 10 games, 423 batting average, 516 on base percentage, 11 RBIs, and 7 runs on the season. And then how about Tommy Ambersoni? Not only can Tommy Ambersoni uh, contribute on the basketball court, but he can also heavily contribute on the baseball diamond a 391 batting average 500 on base percentage 11 runs scored seven rbis and a home run for mr tommy ambersoni and then you have ronnie sheamus 364 batting average 588 on base percentage six runs on the season and an rbi he has contributed connor kelly also contributing heavily with six RBIs and a 333 batting average. Tyler Morris, 333, and also uh, has contributed four runs for the Hopkinton Hillers Senior Ruth program. As a team, they have hit pretty impressive 323 as a team, 448 on base percentage. Impressive stuff by the Senior Ruth team. And not only impressive at, in, the bat, in the batter's box, but also impressive on the pitcher's mound how about this era 1.51 era on the season for hopkinton senior ruth and they have had some impressive performances look at this alex parker hook how about this guy 13 innings pitched on the season look at that era a zero a zero era in 13 innings that is impressive Cam Jarrett, zero, four innings. John Waters, zero, five innings. I expect Waters, Jarrett, and Barker Hook to have a lot of work in the playoffs. Tommy McAuliffe, perfect three innings. Vinny uh, Papura, a perfect uh, three innings. And some of these guys I know are double rostered with AEU programs. I believe uh, Papura is a double rostee. So that's why you see those innings are down for some of these guys. And I believe Tommy McAuliffe is also a double rostered player as well. Jack Breslin has worked 10 innings for the Hopkinton Senior Ruth team. And he has pitched well, a .70 ERA. Impressive stuff by Breslin. He's only given up one run. And then uh, Connor Kelly, six innings, 1.16 ERA. Not too bad at all. Mike Bernie, four innings worked, 1.75. And then you got this guy, Nick Skiba, 14 innings, 2.00 ERA. Very impressive. Very strong pitching by the Hopkinton Senior Ruth team. And we certainly look forward to trying to cover as many playoff games as we can and seeing what they do in the postseason. An impressive squad Coach Simos has this year. And it should be a fun postseason run. Both the Ashland Sevens and the Hopkinton Senior Ruth team are currently in their last weeks of the regular season. 
as we mentioned, senior Ruth, they're all done for the regular season and the playoffs are going to be starting very soon. We're waiting to get that schedule. We'll certainly let you know on our website, hcam.tv, as well as our social media pages in the Ashland sevens, a couple more games left. Our next broadcast is actually going to be Friday night, July 31st tonight. If you're uh, watching this on that live hangout hour, uh, we will have Ashland Sevens baseball. It's a makeup game against Kingston, 5.45 p.m. First pitch from Ashland Middle School. Come down and enjoy some baseball if you want. Of course, you just have to bring a mask, properly socially distanced, but it's a fun atmosphere down there over at Ashland Middle School. So next up for both of the teams will be playoff baseball, and we will certainly be covering as much of the action as possible. So be on the lookout for broadcasts of both teams and the latest news, information, and highlights on our website, hcam.tv. We will also let you know uh, when and where the teams will be playing and what game we will have through our YouTube live stream at youtube.com slash hcamtv. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy, and that will do it for this summer baseball update and this episode of the Hopkinton Hangout Hour. Thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you again soon. Don't forget to watch the Hopkinton Hangout Hour every weekday at 2 p.m. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great weekend, and thanks for tuning in.